I'm soon going to be launching the Patients Getting Paid online course that will teach you how to get paid because of your illness, not despite it. Are you interested in doing patient advocacy work, but you don't know where to start? Want to learn about how to find online remote gigs or learn to create your own? I wish somebody would have created this roadmap for me. I spent a lot of time and energy and money figuring it all out. I want you to be able to leapfrog over all that stuff and get to the good stuff, getting paid for sharing your story. In my new course, Patients Getting Paid, I'll be sharing my experience and my resources on how to create an income online that lets me take good care of myself. Want to learn how I did it? Want a list of resources, places to look for online gigs, and templated emails with what to say? It's in there. Want to hear about tons of different ways you can actually build a business while taking better care of yourself? It's in there. Want to be included in a database of chronic illness warriors so your contact info can be shared when opportunities for your disease come my way? Then get on the waiting list for Patients Getting Paid and be the first to know when it launches. Sign up now at patientsgettingpaid.com forward slash list. Welcome to the FUMS Now podcast show, where you'll gain information, inspiration, and motivation for living your best life with multiple sclerosis. Find us online at FUMSnow.com. I'm your host, Kathy Reagan Young. David Lyons was diagnosed with MS in 2006 at the age of 47. A bodybuilder and former owner of fitness centers, Lyons made the choice to fight MS head on through bodybuilding. He founded the MS Bodybuilding Challenge in 2008, and in 2009, at age 50, competed in his first bodybuilding contest with MS, winning a most inspirational trophy. He went on to be presented with the Milestone Award by the National MS Society for his accomplishments. In 2012, Lyons and his wife Kendra, a registered nurse, created the MS Fitness Challenge to support people with MS in their efforts to stay as fit as possible, overcome limitations, and keep their bodies moving. The cause also educates trainers on fitness for MS. David has far too many accolades to list here. I'll include them in the show notes for the podcast, along with his URLs and socials. You can find that at fumsnow.com slash podcast. Today, David is here to talk about his latest venture, where he's created a unique fitness website for the MS community under his Optimal Body brand called the Optimal Body Training Program for MS. This interactive platform educates and trains people with MS in his one-of-a-kind training methods that creates neuroplasticity, muscle fiber activation, and brain-to-muscle reconnection. Let's go meet David and hear all about this new venture. Well, hello and welcome, David Lyons. So glad to have you on FUMS. It's uh, my pleasure, actually, to be here. Oh, I'm thrilled. We've been trying to do this for a while. Yes, we have. We, have. Glad we finally connect. Yay. I'm glad we could. Um, you're so busy. I'm glad you could make a little time for us today. And, um, you know, I've been watching you over the years and you make me tired with everything that you're doing. <laughs> but I want to thank you for everything you're doing because you're helping our community a lot. You have this amazing fitness background and you have MS, <laughs> but you didn't let that stop you in your pursuit of fitness, which is incredible. Would you mind sharing your diagnosis story and maybe a bit of your background, you know, prior to it? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, my background goes back since I was almost a kid. I was in the gym. I was a fighter. I was a boxer. I was in martial arts. I was not into bodybuilding until later into about my twenties. Um, and that's another story, you know, because they, they thought that, that I had a blood clot in my brain when I was oh my in God. my early twenties, they, they said I couldn't fight anymore. I was going to become a professional boxer. And they said, you've got a blood clot and we cannot give you a professional license. So oh, I geez. said, okay, what do I do now? You know, I'm an athlete and I really didn't want to go into team sports because I was one of these people that likes to accomplish something on my own. Mm -hmm. um, and bodybuilding was a natural to go into. But you know, the funny thing is that was not a blood clot. If we look back, that was a lesion. Oh. And because it was so many years ago, they didn't even understand what was going on. 
they just blamed everything for me getting hit in the head as a fighter and said, mm. you know, your, your speech slurring, your loss of balance, right. all these things that is from brain damage. Right. So, you know, when I look back and I say, wow, you know, they, they, they took my boxing career away. It was yeah. really because of MS, not because of a blood clot that was right. there. But I was always Crazy. into fitness and, and owned gyms and was very involved in training people on it, studying the body and understanding how to build a physique the way you wanted it. And I was really a trainer, a personal trainer before there were any certifications or anyone was called a personal trainer. I was just a guy coaching people in my gym and they would pay me to take them into the gym. Do it. And do what all of these trainers are now doing with the right. certifications. Um, and I think certifications are really important because they educate people. Mm -hmm. But I've been always in, in fitness. And when I got diagnosed, I was you know, the ripe old age of 47. And it was in 2006. And I was working out in the gym and I started getting a pain in my left shoulder. Um, and it started going down my arm and, and was numb. And we know that feeling, that tingling, that numbness. Sure do. That pain. Um, originally, you know, the first thought was, because it was coming down here, you know, am I having a heart attack? Um, right. right. But I, I quickly dismissed that because I said, I don't get a heart attack. So I'm Superman, you know, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't happen. So I just kept working out. And I said, you know, I think I've got a pinched nerve here. So let me just push past it. Several months went by and I kept ignoring it. And of course, as MS does, it doesn't stop. It kept attacking my body to the point where I could not move my legs. I couldn't feel anything from the chest down. So, you know, I was pretty much paralyzed. You know, I could barely move my arms. My arms weren't working correctly. And that's when they rushed me to the hospital. But they rushed me to a cancer hospital thinking again that I had something going on in my brain that had nothing to do with MS. Mm -hmm. They thought there was a tumor or a brain cancer. When I got to the, and I lived in Florida at the time, so I got to the Orlando Cancer Hospital, which was one of the top in Florida. And they said, um, okay, you know, let's run a scan. They did an open scan on me because I, I refused to go into that MRI machine. So they put me in this big open thing and, and it didn't really read it correctly. So they confirmed that I had a mass in my brain. Mm. A brain surgeon comes in. He said, okay, so we're going to operate on you. We're going to remove this mass. And he said, it could be cancerous, and we won't know until we get in there. Jeez. And I said, so, Doc, let, let, let me get this right. You're going to go and cut my head open. You don't know what you're cutting for. And what happens to me if you remove this thing? He said, well, chances are you're going to be paralyzed from the waist down because this mass – is blocking where everything. it's sitting and it, yeah and, and it's against the parts of your brain that will control this so you probably will be paralyzed and there's a chance you could die on on a, the operating table so i said okay so here's my here's my <laughs> good news my, here's, here's the, cho the choices i have kathy i die or i'm paralyzed really yeah. I mean, what are the choices that i have and i wow. said to him, if those are my choices i said you're not operating. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're crazy because if this is cancer, you're going to die. I said, well, then I'll die. You know, Taking I'm not going to my head open. Well, a nurse wow. heard this whole thing going on. And she came in and she said, Mr. Lyons, I know a neurologist. And he's one of the top in the country. He happens to work with our, our cancer hospital. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I call him to come and look at you? I said, well, I've got nothing to lose. Right. He came in. He put me in a regular MRI. Of course, they drugged me up for six hours to get me in there. So six hours of MRIs, a spinal tap, of course, the blood work. Yeah, and all the fun up. stuff. Yeah, the, you know, the great things we have to go. Yeah, uh, to get this mm -hmm. Five days later, he said, sat me down. He said, you've got MS. Mm -hmm. I said, MS? I didn't even know yeah. what MS was. Right, I right. I said, what does me that neither. stand for? I know what MD is. I knew muscular yeah. dystrophy because... I saw Jerry on, on television. Exactly. I have a funny story to tell you about that later. Go ahead. I mean, I mean Kathy, who knew what MS was? You know? No, so, right. So me neither. He explains, you know, multiple sclerosis and what it does. And, and he said, look, Dave, you're, you're going to be in a wheelchair. You, you allowed so much damage over these couple of months that you ignored this. 
Because I, I still, I couldn't even after all the, the salamedrol and everything that they were throwing in my body to get the inflammation down, I was able to walk a little bit better, but I still couldn't feel anything from my left side. The whole side was numb. So he said, you're, you're basically have messed up your whole body and you're going to be in a wheelchair within six months. Um, hey, wait, a, can I just say too, this yeah. guy is blaming the victim. You've done this yeah. to yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he said, if you would have gotten here, you know, we probably could have stopped some of this damage, but you didn't, you know, and, and who knows, you know, is that true? Is it not true? I, I don't know. Right. I mean, you know, I know people that have had attacks going right into the hospital and they still have the same damage. Right. You know, that we have. So mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what was he trying to tell me, you know, right. You know, this is your fault, but yeah. you know, so what did I do? You know, I, I, I've got a very strong faith. And I, I said to the doctor, I said, you know, you know, medicine, that's great, but you don't know my God and, and I'm not going to be in a wheelchair, but you know, here's, here's the, the, the kicker. So I go home with this positive attitude that I'm going to beat this disease. I wouldn't even let them wheel me out of the hospital. They, of course, said, you know, we're not letting you out without wheeling you. That's part of protocol. So I sat in the wheelchair while they took me down the elevator. When I got into the lobby, I pushed myself out. I grabbed a hold of the wall and I wobbled my way out the door. I would not let them push me out the door. That's how positive I was. But when mm -hmm. I got home, I did what we all do. Okay, and you got to remember this like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I went on the internet. And you Googled, I said, Dr. Google, the worst thing you can do. Got it. That's right. I did too. Okay. <laughs> and, what, and what do you find? You find everything. Horrible everyone. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Complaining that their life is over. Yeah, it was no awful. positive community Nothing. back then. No. You know, it was all about how MS has destroyed their life, all the medications you need to take, all these mm -hmm. things. So I quickly started to get depressed. You know, and I said, wow, you know, maybe, maybe this doctor's right. You know, maybe mm -hmm. I'm just never going to be able to do what I used to do. And slowly but surely, I became immobilized. Mm -hmm. And I sat in my room. I didn't do, I let my business go. I let everything go. I didn't let my body go. I went mm -hmm. from about 200 pounds of muscle to about 160 pounds of soft nothing. I mean, there was nothing there. I just could not get myself into the gym or motivated with the way I felt and the way I was yeah, moving. Depressed. I had friends that were bodybuilders that would come over to my house and say, you've got to get to the gym. And I'd say, nope, not going. Look at me. This is embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a competitive bodybuilder and look at what I look like. I can't even lift five pounds. I can't squeeze my fingers. I can't do, I can't move my left leg. How am I going to work out? about a year and a half of this went on. And then one day I looked in the mirror and I said, enough, I'm going back in the gym, you know? And again, because of my faith, I prayed every day. And, you know, you know I knew that I knew in my heart that God had a purpose mm -hmm. and I kept every day asking God, what is that purpose? And I didn't get an answer, mm -hmm. you know? So I was getting more and more like depressed about this. Yeah. But that, one, that one day, I heard that answer. And that answer was, you're an athlete, you're a fighter, get back into the gym and slowly get yourself back. And I'll show you what that purpose is. When you said that, I just heard the theme for Rocky playing in my head. <laughs> I've, I've got that on my phone. I mean, I, I listen to that all the time. I of the tiger and the Rocky. Thing yeah. And, right. You know, all that stuff, you know, it's motivating music, but yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I had no idea sure. what I was going to do. So my friends took me into the gym. We worked out. They were lifting me in and out of equipment. They were lifting my left leg, putting it on the leg press, mm -hmm. kept falling off. They were holding my leg, you know, and this went on for a while. But, you know, within a couple of months, I started putting on some muscle again. And I mm -hmm. went from 160 to 175 pounds within a few months. And I said, you know what? I could compete in a bodybuilding competition. Oh my gosh. And my doctors said, you're insane. You cannot do this. You need to be on MS meds. And I would refuse to take any MS meds. I never went on. Oh. So, oh, wow. said, you know, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to train and I'm going to beat this disease. So that's the road that I ended up taking but so I was diagnosed in, in 2006. It was almost 2000 and 
seven and a half when I got into the gym. Mm. In 2008, I competed in a bodybuilding competition at 50 years what? old. That's crazy. What a story. And I didn't compete. They had a disabled division, you know, where people wheeled you in. And wheeled yeah. you. I wouldn't do it. I said, I'm going to compete against the healthy guys. And I did. I got a nice trophy, a really big trophy. It said most <laughs> inspirational. I couldn't beat these guys. I mean, these guys have been, you know, training their whole lives. And, right. You know, but I was able to get myself in unbelievable condition with MS and despite MS, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Kathy? Bodybuilding did not make my MS better. It actually mm -hmm. was hurting me because I was training and pushing my body too much. Oh. So I had to start figuring out, how do you beat this disease? If it's not through bodybuilding, and bodybuilding maybe makes me look good, it makes me feel better, but it's not beating MS. How do I beat MS? Yeah. But here's what I did. I started to look into exercise programs for MS. Mm -hmm. I found a lot of these functional exercise programs, which were nice, you know, and they got you moving. And I did all of the exercises. I didn't get any better. Mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling any stronger. I wasn't really getting anywhere where I could beat this disease through that. Yes, it got me moving. And I'm not saying that functional exercise is bad. Functional exercise yeah. is great. But it was not getting me ahead of MS. What you needed. Mm -hmm. So I started to look into what I knew about the body. And I started to go back into all the years of my studying. And I have a degree in nutrition. So I went there and, and started putting together the, the inflammation part of this disease and how we mm -hmm. get rid of the inflammation. And what do we do? To beat this disease and I found through trial and error and using myself as a guinea pig that if I utilize my thought process with specific training that I've created that I can beat this disease and slowly but surely that's what happened my wow. left hand back my left hand which I still cannot feel I couldn't do this when I mm -hmm. first started now I could do this Wow, I can that's do great. whatever I want. I can squeeze. I can jump. I can squat. I can do anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm 62 years old and I'm in better condition and more mobile and less MS problems than I was when I was younger. Wow. Now, why is that? Okay. It's because I had to apply specific training methods and principles of brain to muscle that made the difference between getting ahead of MS. After I did this for a year and a half on myself, I started to train people with MS mm. and they started getting the same results. And I was having a hundred percent success rate with everyone, whether they came to me in a wheelchair or whether they were, you know, uh, able to do ambulatory. Mm -hmm. Right. So I said, okay, this program works. And then I started creating all these different programs and we created the charity where we're helping people in you know, the MS Fitness Challenge, where we help people all over the world. We're in 25 countries now helping people. I started developing um, training courses for people that are trainers. So I work with the MedFit uh, Education Foundation. I wrote their MS course. Um, I work with the National Federation of Professional Trainers and I wrote their course for MS. So over these years, I've taken all that knowledge and I've helped other trainers to be able to work with people with MS. And I've helped a ton of people with MS worldwide be able to get ahead of this disease. That's fantastic. And helping other people really helps you, doesn't it? Absolutely. I tell them, mm -hmm. never thank me. You give me more than I give you. Yeah, that feels good to help others. Are there days... Are there days when you are unable to exercise or does that not exist for you now? It doesn't exist for me now. Um, there are days that I don't want to exercise. That was my next question because, yeah, I want to hear how you get over that because that's where I live. Yeah. There, <laughs> well, there, there's days, you know, and I've had them just recently where I'm really tired. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel good. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm weaker and mm -hmm. I have to get myself up and at them to do this. Yeah, right. My training methods rely on a three-day cycle. So it's three days of workout, one day of rest. 
three days of workout. So it's mm. kind of a workout. It's basically you're working out six days out of a, out of a week. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have that motivation to do it, to stay in the program. What happens to me when I feel like that is I do what I tell my, my students to do. You have to stop and you have to think, what is it that we're trying to accomplish here? What do we want to, where What's do we the goal? want to go? What's our goal? And you have to have that goal. And whether that goal is a little goal where you say, hey, I want to get up out of my wheelchair. I want to be able to stand up and down. I want to walk my dog around the block a few times. Or I've had people come to me and I, I've gotten them to bodybuilding and fitness competitions with MS. Mm, wow. That's different than their goal, but you have to have a sure. goal. And if you have that goal, Kathy, when you get up in the morning and you feel like garbage, mm. you will say to yourself, but if I don't do this, I'm not going to reach my goal. Mm. So you will get up. But without that goal, Kathy, you don't have that inner um, sure. drive. You know? Yeah. So I tell people... Use a vision board, whatever it is that motivates you. Put it out there. Put mm -hmm. a picture of you walking around the block. Whatever, draw it if you don't have a picture of it. <laughs> right. You know, just put something in front of you that you can relate to that gets you mm -hmm. motivated. Mm -hmm. and you can get that motivation. You can keep that motivation. Yeah. And even on those days when you lose a little bit of that motivation, you feel like, oh, I don't, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do this today. Yeah. push past it you'll be able to do it and I would imagine so that's really accountability to yourself and your own goals but yeah. I've always heard that having you know a workout buddy or accountability group um, group yeah. exercise that sort of thing um, can motivate you beyond yourself so when you know you really don't feel like doing it but you've promised somebody that you're going to meet them to walk or something like that you yeah. feel obligated whether you want to do it or not you feel obligated so well what's you, great about um my community is we, you know, we have a facebook page the ms fitness challenge gym which has 7500 people i think now you know all of that gives people motivation to go into a group and feel accountable to each other yeah with our new program our optimal body training program for ms now we've got a membership where people could come in and interact. We have a private Facebook group just for those members. Okay. And I mean, last night I did a live stream and the interaction is amazing. You know, you have people that are going on there, motivating each other, you know, talking about the yeah. program and how it's changing their lives. You know, those are the type of things that keep people moving forward. You have right. to have a positive place to live. And it doesn't mean that you need a training partner to go with you to the gym because most people aren't even going to the gym. I'm right. doing everything online pretty much. And our, our students and our members and people that are following our program are doing it at home with resistance bands and dumbbells and things like that. But this community, this, this online community is yeah. enough to keep you motivated because you're accountable to not only yourself, but to all those people that are rooting you on. Right. That's right. So um, you're talking about your new program, which is, I want to hear all about it. And it's Optimal Body Training Program for MS, right? Yes. Is that the yes. name? All right. Tell us all about it. Because now I know about the community. That sounds great. I yeah. would get in there just to chat with people, no, but I guess I'd have to exercise too. <laughs> well, got, you, well, after this, I'm going to make sure you're exercising. <laughs> I am. I do. I really do. But probably, oh, oh, definitely not to the extent that you do. But I, I, I'm a mover for sure. <laughs> well, the, the, the program comes from all of those training methods that I told you that I've developed over these last right. probably 10 years of doing this, where we are use, utilizing what I call focus-driven or thought-based training. Now, there's a lot of science behind this. So this is not, you know, something that I just pulled out of the hat and said, mm -hmm. oh, you know, do it because Dave says to do it. Right. There's science. And the science behind this is, is very, very clear. And they did no studies with people with MS. So this has nothing to do with MS. This has to do with how the body works because they don't do studies with us. I mean, they don't care. You know, they're not, <laughs> right. not going to do a, a big study. I would love to get a study on, on how this works with people. Yeah. With MS. I'm, I'm working on that right now, by the way, with some doctors. But um, in the meantime, there's studies on athletes that prove that if you utilize your brain during your workout, but you have to do it right. It's not just, oh, you know, let's have positive thinking. 
Right. There has to be a specific program that you're using this with, and I created that. But if that program is there and you're utilizing the thought process and the focus during the workout, there's three things that we will create for people with MS. One is something called acetylcholine. It's a chemical in our brain, and acetylcholine moves the muscles. Without acetylcholine, your muscles don't move. So you can't do this unless right. you have acetylcholine. Now, what happens with people with MS is they're not exercising most of them, or they're doing functional leg lifts and things like that. That does not create acetylcholine. Mm -hmm. Acetylcholine is created at a high level by focus-driven exercise. And they found that the more acetylcholine and the more focus-driven exercise, the more muscle fibers in your body will get activated. So that's number one. Number two is we create a brain to muscle reconnection and a muscle back to the brain reconnection. So it's going back and forth. We've lost that connection in our muscles with a lot of the nerves that have been disconnected. So we want to try to create neuroplasticity, but that's not 100% possible all the time. I know people throw that out and you hear a lot of trainers and physical therapists, oh, you know, if you just go like this, you're going to get neuroplasticity. That's not true. That's misleading. And they should not be telling people that. Neuroplasticity, it, for those who don't know what it is, and most people with MS understand it, but it means that the, the nerves that are disconnected and are no longer working, we're deleting them. We're saying, we don't need you. We're going to find those nerves in, in our body that work, and we're going to redirect them to, let's say, our bicep, because we're doing a yeah. bicep. We're going to redirect it to where we want it to go. Plug it in. Plug in yeah. the right one. <laughs> That's a, that's a great concept and it's a beautiful concept and our body can do that but it's not an easy concept or an easy mm. process for the body to do but what can be done is if we reconnect our brain to our muscles and back to our brain we can bypass that whole system we don't need the nerves anymore mm. that is a proven that is a scientific proven that you can use your brain to move your muscles beyond mm. the nervous system and then the third thing that we do create is neuroplasticity. The way that I train through my clients or my, my students or my members of my program is through getting neuroplasticity to happen because we're forcing that to happen. So we're forcing these three things in our body to happen to the most our body can do. And everybody's different. You know, we're a snowflake sure. disease. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what works for me maybe will work better than from some, for somebody else. But I will tell you that we have had a hundred percent success rate with everybody that has used my program to the extent that they're able to do more than they were able to do before. Now mm -hmm. there's nobody that can say that in the MS community with these exercise programs. Unfortunately, a lot of the programs out there are designed by guys and women that don't have MS. Mm -hmm. So they're not understanding really that these functional exercises are nice and they're good to get us moving, but they're not going to get you ahead of MS. I tell people MS is constantly ahead of us and we're chasing this disease. Well, I flip the switch. If you train the way I tell you to train, you will be here and MS is going to try to catch you and you're constantly going to be getting ahead of it. I'm running it. Change the way we train consistently we change the training methods to allow our body to continuously progress and get stronger and get more mobile. And I'm not just saying this. If you read the testimonials, I have hundreds and hundreds of testimonials and new testimonials that are coming from people that just joined our, our membership. We have like 200 people that have joined the Optimal Body Training Program within one month. And those people are all posting how this is the best program they've ever seen, that they're getting results that they've never gotten. You know, I'm not telling them to say any of this. This is right. them saying it. But I will say this. I'm not saying that I'm smarter than anybody or, you know, I know more than anyone or other people are not good at what they're doing. But what I am saying is I took the time as a fitness expert with multiple sclerosis, with this disease, to understand how we, as people with MS, need to get stronger and more mobile. And I've created the programs to enable them to do that. 
I was just voted one of the top 100 healthcare leaders in the world, not because I applied for that. They went out and they went and they found people that claim to be fitness experts for MS. And they said, who is really doing the job? And they voted me as in the top 100 healthcare. I'm not Congratulations. On the back. Well, well, I'll do it for you. Congratulations. Well, well thank you. <laughs> I, I always say that, you know, because I want people to understand that I take this very seriously. You're the real deal. You know, and I put the time into it. I put the effort. Mm-hmm. This is a passion. I live this with you guys every day. I'm not making up something so that I can make money from the MS community because most of the stuff that I do, like we have an eight week challenge going on in two days, that's free. You know, we have programs on our website for msfitnesschallenge.org that are free in nutrition, in mindset, in wellness, in exercise. You know, the only paid program that I have is the optimal body program because that's really an intense and very, very comprehensive program. And there's overhead because it's, you know, the internet. And we've got sure. a constant. Of course. Videos. But oh, it's, all very, about it. <laughs> it's very affordable. Believe me, it's very affordable okay, for good. people. And we're very excited about what, we're all, what we've already seen in the first month of, of launching. So, you know, it's, well, it's exciting. It should. That's very exciting. Um, so if people are interested in learning more about this program, where do they find out more? Well, there's, Where do they go? Okay, there's um, OBP, so that's okay. Optimal Body Personal, OBPFitness.com. They can go there okay. and kind of look. But if they really want the story, I've given you a link that says OBPFitness.com, and it says about the membership. Okay. okay. So that is the, the, that'll talk about the science of this, why I'm doing this, why this is the best program out there. It really goes into detail. So if you Excellent. could give people that link, that would be great. I will. I'll put it all in the show notes. As with everything, we put everything in the show notes. So don't drive off the road if you're just listening. I and got you. We're giving, <laughs> we're giving all of your listeners a discount code to save money every single month on the program. And once they're locked in, that's for life. It, it will never be raised for them. So if we raise the price of the program a year down the road, their price will never be raised. That's fantastic. Uh, do you know what that code is? Yes. There, is it like FUMS5? Yay! <laughs> Very simple. I love it. Where'd you come up with that? I love it. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you for, for giving our community that discount. Thank you for everything that you do for the entire MS community. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Take care. Quick shout out to Steve Woodward at podcastingeditor.com for the fantastic work on this podcast, including editing, show notes, and ingenious ideas. If you'd like help with your podcast, whether you're just starting out or an old pro, visit podcastingeditor.com and tell Steve I sent you. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to the FUMS Podcast Show. Be sure to subscribe to it so you won't miss an episode. You can do that right on the website at FUMSnow.com. While you're there, sign up for the free email list so you'll be among the first to know of any new findings in MS research, new therapies and products, as well as any blog posts and podcast episodes I release. Want to chat with others in the FUMS community? Join us on Facebook at FUMS Now. Thanks again, and don't forget to talk to the stupid disease as it deserves. Tell it FUMS every day.